Ciao, friends. In this short session, I want to answer a very important question. Should you use bidirectional relationships in your tabular model or not? Well, the quick answer is no, you should not, unless you know exactly the drawbacks of using bidirectional cross filters. Indeed, whenever you enable bidirectional filtering in any model, you might have two different issues. The first one is ambiguity, and the second one is performance. So you might create an ambiguous model, or you might have a model that is much, much slower than it should if you only use the regular relationships. And to demonstrate that, we will first look at an example where bidirectional cross filter might make sense for the business scenario, and then we will do an analysis of ambiguity and an analysis of performance. Once you have a clear picture of the drawbacks of bidirectional cross filters, then the choice is up to you. If you need them and you are ready to pay that price, then it's fine, you can go ahead. So, let's start by looking at an example where bidirectional cross filter makes sense. Let's start by taking a look at this model. As you see, if we have a model with five tables. We have sales and we have purchases. Sales and purchases are two fact tables. And then I have a few dimensions. Product, which is linked to both sales and purchases. Data, which is linked again both to sales and purchases. And finally, customer. Customer is only linked to sales and obviously not to purchases. Now, based on this model, I can create a simple report, as I did, where I have uh, a first slicer that is filtering by customer name, then a report that shows a sales by color, and a second slicer that is filtering only the color. Everything is working fine. I can filter by color, and I have my numbers, and I can filter by customer. The problem of this report is that uh, you see that even though I am filtering by customer, I am filtering only Stephanie Adams, the matrix is only showing black and silver, the only two colors that uh, Stephanie is buying, whereas uh, the color slicer is still showing everything. So I'm still seeing all the colors, and it doesn't matter whether I change the filter. The filter from the customer does not flow to the colors. Why is that happening? Well, this happens because of the relationships. By default, Power BI moves the filter from the one side to the many side, so a filter on customer will reach sales, but from sales it does not go to product. Therefore, a filter on the customer is not actively filtering the product table. I might want to change this behavior so that whenever I select one customer, the filter will reach product too. So, I can simply go to this relationship, and instead of using the cross filter direction as single, I go for a bidirectional cross filter. If you carefully look at this small arrow, this is the direction of the propagation of the filter context, which is currently saying that the filter goes from product to sales, but not from sales to product. But as soon as I enable bidirectional cross filter, the arrow becomes two arrows to indicate that the, the filter will now go both ways of the relationship. And if I go in my report now, everything seems to work nicely because I can see filter Stephanie and I only see the colors that Stephanie bought. And if I change my filter, of course, the slicer is still applying the filter. The problem is that by doing that, I created an ambiguous model. And to see that, we need to go back to the slide and do some reasoning on top of this model with the bidirectional cross filter. So let's focus on the four tables. Let's forget about customer for a moment. And let's ask ourselves, why is this model ambiguous? Because Power BI let me create it. So Power BI already checked for ambiguity and it stated that the model is fine as it is. Indeed, if you carefully look at the chain of relationships, there is one chain of relationship that creates ambiguity. Let's start from product. Product filters sales and it filters purchases. And that's it. It doesn't go anywhere else. But if you focus on date, date filters sales and date filters purchases. And that is fine. But how does date filter purchases? It can go two ways. It can go straight because there is a one-to-many relationship that goes from date to purchases. But it can also follow a much longer path, starting from date, reaching sales, then product, and finally purchases. 
because of this, the model is now ambiguous. We have two ways of following the relationship. The short one, which is the preferred one, or the long one. The long one does multiple steps, but it's able to reach purchases the same way. Now, the thing is, Power BI does not consider this model as ambiguous because there is a preferred path, and the preferred path is the shortest one. Having two different ways of obtaining the same goal, it goes for the shortest and the fastest one. So, if we only had four tables, that would not be an issue. The problem is, in our model, we, do no, longer we no longer have only four tables, we have five tables, because we also have customers. And uh, the presence of customers, so increasing the complexity, of course, increases the complexity of resolving uh, the scenario. So let's ask ourselves a few questions on the real model. The first one, does date filter sales? We have date, we have sales, there is a direct relationship between the two, so the answer is clearly yes, the filter is going from date to sales stripe. Now, does customer filter purchases? That's a long path, but it can be followed. If you start by customer, you go to sales, then the presence of bidirectional cross filter here, let the filter go from sales to product, then to product from product to purchases, and the filter from customer reaches purchases. The next question, does date filter purchases? Again, we already know the answer, yes. It's true that there are two different chains of relationship, but one is preferred, so date filters purchases strike. Now, the problem comes if you mix all these tables. Imagine you create a report that is slicing by customer, let's say by customer continent, and it's also slicing by year. So a column in the filter context comes from the year, another column comes from the customer. And the question is, which subset of sales is actually filtering purchases? Because sales is filling a filter from data and the filter from customer. So both tables filter sales, and then we know that sales will go to purchases to propagate the filter coming from customer. But at the same time, date is filtering purchases. So will the engine use this relationship to move the filter from date to purchases, or this relationship to, filter, to avoid the filtering using this relationship, because otherwise that would be conflicting? That's an interesting question. And uh, trust me, the presence of the question itself is already an issue, because we don't have a very clear picture of what is happening, even though this is just a simple star schema. In order to answer the question, what I did is create three measures. One measure that just computes the sum of parches, one measure that computes the sum of parches disabling this relationship, and another measure that computes the sum of parches is disabling this relationship. So my guess was that uh, out of the three measures, two will be equal, and I will be able to understand which is the preferred path. Actually, this is not what is happening. If uh, we go to the demo and we look at the measures, I have already created the measures, and I created uh, this report that is showing the three different calculations in the same point, at the same time. And uh, it's not important to understand all the numbers. The important thing is that all the numbers are different. In the standard model, we obtain a set of values where date does not filter purchases, so we just follow the short path, we have a different set of values. And when date does not filter sales, so we have the short path and not the long one, then again, we have different numbers. Meaning that you can obtain the value that you want if you manually enable the relationship that you want, but if you let the engine choose the chain of relationship, it will use a mix. So it will use both the filter from date and customer to filter sales, then sales will filter purchase, but at the same time, date will filter purchase. So the relationship between date and purchase will follow two paths and then it will join at the end. It's a too complex model. It's too complex to understand that the numbers debug and make sure that everything works fine. This is ambiguity. So, whenever you want to use a bidirectional cross filter, you need to pay attention to ambiguity. You need to make sure that your model does not contain any sort of ambiguity. And the best, the best way to avoid it is not to enable bidirectional cross filter in the model, as we did there, but enable bidirectional cross filter when needed in specific measures. 
if you hide the bidirectional cross filters inside a measure, then you are sure that you can control whatever happens. And no matter how the model changes, you will always have a point where you can check that the relationship you have are fine and the numbers you create are the right one. There is another important topic, which is performance. So let's analyze performance about uh, bidirectional relationships. In order to analyze performance, I didn't want to use uh, the previous model because I wanted to have a clear picture in order to understand the difference between moving the filter from the one side to the many side or from the many side to the one side. Now keep in mind that the Tumblr data model has been created in order to move the filter from the one side to the many side and it does it very quickly. Moreover, whenever you move the filter from the one side to the many side, you typically have additivity of simple calculations. Whereas as soon as the filter goes from the many side to the one side, you no longer have additivity and you're using the slower part of the engine. So in order to make a test, I created two identical tables. They are absolutely the same table and they are linked through a relationship, which is with bidirectional enable. I will run a query moving the filter from the one side to the many side and then the same query from the many side to the one side to evaluate the price, the increase in price that happens when you change the direction of the filter. Let's start by looking at the, the model. So I have two tables, one side and many side. They both have around 12 million rows and they are linked through this relationship that goes from the one side to the many side. My directional cross filter is already enabled. But what I will do is I run a query that groups by one column in one side and computes the sum of the many side. And then I will run the opposite query, grouping from the many side and computing values from the one side. So the only thing that changes in the two queries is the direction of the relationship. Either it goes from the one to the many side or from the many to the one side everything else will be totally identical. Let's take a look at the queries. First of all, we have this query that does a summarization from the one side by data and computes the value from the many side. So the filter goes from the one side to the many side. Now, I can run this query. It's quite fast, it returns a thousand rows. And if you look at server timings, this query runs in 86 milliseconds, which is the expected amount of time to scan 12 million rows and do the grouping by. The second query that I'm about to run is uh, the opposite. It groups by the many side, groups by one column in the many side, and computes the amount on the one side. So the difference now is that uh, it uses the relationship the other way around. If we run it, we already have an idea that uh, it's going to be slower. You see that it takes much longer. And it actually crashed. No, it didn't. So it ran the query, and if we look at server timing, these are the values, 4.7 seconds. Now, let's take a look at earlier. We start, we move from 86 milliseconds to 4.7 seconds. So the increase in execution time is just huge. The reason is I link two tables which are the same. Bear in mind, I did that because I wanted to evaluate the price to pay. This is not a real case scenario. In a typical scenario, you have a smaller cardinality. Whenever you traverse a relationship from the many side to the one side, what really matters is the values, the distinct values of the key that you are using to link the two tables. In this case, the key is huge, it's around 12 million rows. So it's a very complex query that, that, needs, that needs to be executed. But even when you move the filter from a fact table to a dimension, you still have to pay the price. So let's uh, draw some conclusion from uh, the entire session. Bidirectional cross filters are powerful. They are powerful, they are useful, but they have two issues, performance and ambiguity. If you plan to use uh, bidirectional cross filters in the model, first you need to spend a lot of time understanding whether there is ambiguity in your model or not. This is a boring task, a hard task, but you need to carry that on. Otherwise, the numbers become totally unpredictable. 
And this scenario might typically happen when you enable bidirectional cross filter between a fact table and a dimension because your purpose is that of moving the filter from one dimension to another dimension. There are other scenarios which are typically wrong models because uh, they could have been worked better, where you enable bidirectional cross filter between two fact tables. If that happens, you still have ambiguity issues, but you also have large performance issues that might be present because of the large cardinality of your columns. So whenever you plan to use bidirectional cross filters, first ask yourself if you are putting yourself in trouble because you might have those issues. If the answer is no, then go ahead, enable bidirectional cross filters, but be prepared to repeat the entire check process every time you change anything in the model. If not, uh, or if you are not sure that the performance might be an issue or that ambiguity might be a problem, then stay away from bidirectional cross filter and review, review your model so to use only regular one-to-many relationships. Have fun with that.